What's up everyone and welcome back to Triple Threat. This is the series on my channel where we cover three of the trending topics of the week, react to them and kind of get a grip, engage what's going on in the culture. With that being said, don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you feel so inclined. And if you have any topic ideas or any comments, leave them down below. With that out of the way, let's get started. Topic number one, uh, I have to say as a disclaimer, um, generally I wouldn't really support covering this kind of thing. As an addict, you get really comfortable and you kind of crave chaos in your life. So one of the ways that I have found um, to kind of cope and deal with that in, in sobriety and through recovery is to just kind of be amidst healthier chaos. So for me, when I got sober, I got really into like YouTube drama and like drama shows because it's like fun to watch drama that isn't your own. And you're like just close enough to the chaos, but like it's not your drama. It's not your chaos where it's like it kind of feeds that need, I think. Um, call me toxic, but that's just how I feel. Better this than me being out on the streets doing drugs, right? So with that being said, um, the whole Steven Crowder and Daily Wire situation. So I think what I've really kind of come to the consensus of with this is I think everybody's biased. There's the people who watch Steven Crowder and whether or not they want to admit it, they're kind of leaning towards Crowder's side because they like him. And then there's the people who watch Daily Wire and whether they're trying to be biased or not, um, they just are kind of on their side because they like Daily Wire. While I totally understand and actually respect what Steven Crowder is trying to do, I really don't think he needed to take the Daily Wire down with him to do that. So Lauren Chen posted a pretty long live stream on her channel about this subject, and I found hers to be the most enlightening because she has actually worked with Steven Crowder and Daily Wire, as well as been offered contracts from both. And from her experience, she kind of just relayed that Steven Crowder tends to do business a lot more personally. He takes things a little more personally, and he is a little bit melodramatic, egotistical, whereas Daily Wire is more of just your traditional like business dealings. They like to negotiate. It's just more of a corporate vibe. And she does disclaim that there's no way these two probably ever would have worked well together. So what I think really happened is Steven Crowder just kind of took it's just business a little bit personally. You know, there's not really much more I want to say. If You know, I think the argument that, well, he didn't say it was Daily Wire, I think that's kind of bullshit because, I mean, when you watch the video, to me, I knew right away that he was talking about Daily Wire. The ad read thing, there's only so many types of uh, platforms like Daily Wire or The Blaze. Um, he specifically said it wasn't Blaze. It's obviously not Fox. Um, I just think it was really obvious that it was the Daily Wire. So he can kind of hide behind that and shield himself from criticism uh, with that sort of argument. But I, I think it's pretty weak. Again, this kind of reminds me of like indus music industry stuff. You know, I, I went to Berkeley, so I'm very familiar with um, music business and that kind of stuff. My, my boyfriend works in the industry and this is giving like independent versus label. And there's an argument for both and different things work for different people, just different strokes for different folks. And um, while Steven Crowder might think that the way Daily Wire does business is predatory, um, other people don't. And the young talent that he's so worried about, closest we could probably uh, use as an example is Brett Cooper, who was on the Daily Wire. And she has since come out and been like, dude, I'm good. <laughs> Like, yeah, I did have to work a little bit to prove my channel, but then we renegotiated and everything's been fine. So I don't know. I could just be a little bit biased again, because I do love the Daily Wire. I love Matt Walsh. I love Candace Owens. I'm really not actually a big fan of Ben Shapiro at all, but I love those two. And I, I really love the idea of Daily Wire. I love um, trying to kind of solidify conservative values more into the into the culture by creating entertainment and art that have conservative values at heart. And I think um, what Crowder maybe doesn't understand is in order to have movies like What is a Woman and The Greatest Lie Ever Sold by Candace, or even just some of the kids stuff that they're working on, they also have great just general movies for adults and stuff like that. In order to have that kind of stuff, um, we, you know, these require big budgets. And Unfortunately, um, to make an impact on the culture, sometimes you got to spend money to do that. So I don't know. I guess I just kind of feel like while I, I still do respect what, what Crowder wants to do, I don't think that was a very classy approach. If I were 
contending on doing business with Crowder, I would probably remember this moment and be a little iffy about it because what was said in confidence was really not done in confidence. I don't know, I guess to me the language used in that phone call was a little suspicious, but I don't really think it was the end of the world. So at the end of the day, I think this is all kind of silly. And I think if Steven Crowder is so concerned about the so-called movement, I don't really understand why he's creating such a divide in the conservative community um, when there's so much more important things going on. Like maybe again, he doesn't agree with how Daily Wire does their business, but that's not necessarily like his way in his mind of doing business doesn't mean it's the correct way to do it. And I will say that Daily Wire has actually really accomplished a lot for the conservative movement. They helped prevent um, vaccine mandates with the whole OSHA situation. They are creating some of the best entertainment I've seen that has conservative values in it. I think What is a Woman is one of the most important films of our time. They are just doing things that not a lot of other platforms are doing. So to try to take them down, I just think is silly and counterproductive. So, all right, topic number two. I wanna talk about Miss Greta Thunberg. Do you also want those for you now? Wie sieht's denn aus mit der Abadstraße? Was mit der <laughs> okay, so I know that everyone is saying, look, see, it's a setup. This is all a setup. And yeah, while I will acknowledge that, I would argue that the filming of the setup is also maybe a setup, but that's really besides the point. While I do think that climate change is probably somewhat real, it seems only natural, I think the notion of how eminent and how dangerous and how present it really is has probably been exaggerated quite a bit to us. I think it benefits the government, I think it benefits the elite, I think it benefits the uber wealthy to kind of sell us this narrative that uh, climate change is eminent and going to you know harm us any day now. I think it benefits them to say that because they they can tax us more, they can control us more, all the while benefiting themselves more. And I think that's something to always keep in the back of your mind when we're talking about climate change. Things like the plastic straw situation out in California, the electric cars, even the freaking stoves, like all of these things couldn't even compensate for a fraction of what these uber wealthy people do, what they contribute to climate change every day. Kylie Jenner taking in eight minute flights, which you know is certainly not unique to Kylie Jenner. This is what the uber wealthy do every day, all day. All of that contributes to climate change and global warming way more than anything that we as just normal human beings and citizens in America or in whatever country contribute altogether. I just think it is kind of another ploy to get more taxes from us, to just control us more. The world has supposedly going to be ending, you know, in the next five, 10 years for the last, like, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. It's like, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I still recycle. I still try not to litter, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, um, I don't go to bed at night really worried about the world ending due to climate change. So I think this video of Greta Thunberg really just kind of solidifies like the extent that people in power will go to to try and convince us that things like climate change are real, you know, and this kind of exposes that. So yeah, it's time. It's time, everyone. It's time to take a look into the minds of the liberal agenda. Rather than be horrified at what's going through some of these people's minds, um, I think it's just a, a better way to cope with it is just sometimes to have a good laugh at it, right? All right, so again, this is from Libs of TikTok. Let's take a peek at this horrifying video. People are really out here saying that trans chuchi is the inferior product. I'm sorry, we have the designer expensive bougie coochie. Like you're telling me if someone says, would you like this? free paper bag that came with my groceries or would you like this $35,000 bag? You're taking the designer Birkin, babe. Like, seriously, you're just mad because trans girls don't want to put trash like you in our designer bags. I thought the video from last week was bad. <laughs> And it, it just never ceases to amaze me how much worse it gets every single time. 
Like just when you think it couldn't get worse or more offensive, oh my God, they just, they just, they just take it to another level. So I have to say, I thought that, you know, like for trans people, one of like the most important things to them was like being accepted kind of like by the other sex um, or the sex that they want to be. So, you know, as a female watching this, like I, I am never going to accept you. So that is so disrespectful. First off, second off, it's not true. Like, sweetheart, it's not true. Like who's going to tell this woman? While you might akin your man-made genitals to a Birkin, I think actually what we have would be the Birkin because ours is genuine and authentic. Straight from the Hermes factory, you know what I'm saying? I don't think you can call yours a Birkin. Do you get what I'm saying? This is something only a man would do and say, right? It's not really in like our natural female behavior or nature to like A, be bragging about that. <laughs> and B, try to dominate all other women. Like that's such a man thing to do. You're acting like your sex. That's what you're doing. You're acting like a biological man. Also, you know, the red hair in nature, when something is like brightly colored, that is, you know, like a frog brightly colored or a snake, that is usually to warn other animals that they are poisonous. So when you see people like this with crazy colored hair, it's usually a sign from nature that they are mentally unstable and psychotic. Not always, but if they're going to be saying this kind of stuff, that's definitely true. It's so obvious that these people hate women and they just want to erase women. And I do have to mention that these surgeries for the fake kooky, cookie, whatever you want to call it, I don't want to get demonetized, typically go horribly wrong. The hair from the previous genitals grows in there and it can cause even more infections and it's just gross. And it's like, I, you know, you're the one who brought it up. So now I have to call you out on it. Like, let's just go through some of these comments. Here's one from Adam B. Coleman. Just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's of quality facts. This is a really good one because I think this points out like a lot of the issue that I have with the modern um, LGBT etc movement. Kyle Farabee says LGBT movement tries to claim they aren't trying to sexualize American youth yet all they do is sexualize everything and that is so true. Another good one here from Bojack. For those keeping track, it was trans women are women. Now it seems to be a trans women are superior women. Uh, side note, none of you are women. I don't think even five years ago, like anyone had any problems with gay people, lesbian people, trans people. Nobody, nobody has an issue with this stuff. You guys are literally ruining it for yourselves. And this is why I get pissed because, you know, I have gay friends, I have trans friends and they're actually gay and they're actually trans. And those are the people that are going to be most affected by this. Because when you start pissing off literally half the population, i.e. women, you're going to start losing some of this control that you think you have. You're going to start losing some of the rights. You're going to start losing some of the, you know, resources, opportunities, like all that's going to start going out the window because you're going to cause the pendulum to swing so hard the other way that now people who really suffer from this stuff are no longer going to be able to have access to to do something about it you guys are taking your own rights so far back and you don't even see it offending women is not the serve that you think it is I, again I, I honestly like speechless by this like what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below like even women like i, I would actually like to hear even from like some liberal women are you okay with this and do you also notice how like when it's female to male trans person, none of this stuff ever goes on. You don't ever hear people doing this weird kind of stuff to men. And I think that says everything. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any topic ideas for me, um, leave them down below in the comments. What do you guys think of all of this? The Daily Wire, Steven Crowder debacle, climate change, and Greta Thunberg and her little paparazzi setup. And of course, that horrifying clip we just watched. What do you guys think about that? Is this leading to an erasure of women? So let me know your thoughts down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next week. Peace.